Hi, my name is Brian and welcome to Next Gen Equipping, where our mission is to equip youth leaders to give their faith away through helpful online resources. Today's video is actually part two of a two-part series on how to prepare for a winning fundraising appointment, and a key component of that appointment is how to write a winning vision statement. So take a few minutes, listen and enjoy, and I hope it'll be a helpful resource. Today's episode on Next Gen Equipping is how to write a winning vision statement. So I don't know about you, but I've oftentimes heard the words vision and mission getting used interchangeably. So let's take a moment and just define what we mean exactly by vision and how that's different from mission. So vision statements focus on tomorrow and what an organization wants to ultimately become. Whereas mission statements focus on today and what an organization does to achieve it. A really helpful resource that I came across as I was putting this together is an article by Britt Skrabenek. I think I'm saying her name right. Uh, and she wrote this article called The Difference Between Vision and Mission Statements. She provides 25 excellent examples of great organizations that have very, very good vision and mission statements. Um, some more distinctions between the two. Vision statements will answer the following questions. Number one, what are our hopes and dreams? What do we want to see as a result of this long-term big picture? Number two, what problem are we solving for the greater good? So it's not just about us, but there's something bigger that we're trying to achieve. Number three, who and what are we inspiring to change? So those are the three basic questions that most good vision statements are seeking to answer. Contrast that with mission statements. Mission statements answer these three questions. Number one, what do we do? Number two, who do we serve? And number three, how do we serve them? So you can see that mission statements are a little bit more focused on the nitty gritty details the here and now, the audience, and how we're going to go about achieving our long-term goals. So I like to keep it simple. Here's a little chart that I put together of vision and mission. Vision answers the what that is the big picture, whereas mission answers the how, more of the nitty-gritty. Vision is more future-oriented. Mission focuses on here and now. Vision is big picture. Mission is details. Maybe if you're visual like me, the vision is the forest, whereas the mission is the trees. So that's a really simple way of keeping it clear in your own mind about what vision is and what mission is, at least as we're talking about it today. But wait, there's more, because I also think vision is also about your why. Why are you doing what you're doing and not something else? In my time of working in youth ministry, I have met some top shelf leaders. Some of these leaders are some of the best in our field. They're brilliant, they're smart, they're theologically astute, and they have a love and passion for young people. And honestly, they could go into any number of different career fields and probably be making one and a half more times at least what they're getting right now. So why are we doing what you're doing and not something else? Because you could be doing something else, but you're not. You're doing this. And as you craft your vision statement, not only are you answering those questions that we looked at earlier, but you're also trying to communicate and to answer why you're doing what you're doing and not something else. So here's three components of a winning vision statement. First, you need to be able to define the problem. Number two, you need to propose a solution. If you have not clearly defined the problem, then any solution that you come up with at that point is going to be buckshot. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got limited time limited resources. I'm only going to be here on this earth for a little bit before I pass away and go into heaven and be with Jesus forever. But I want to be laser focused in why I'm doing what I'm doing and I want to be purposeful in how I'm going about doing it. So define the problem, propose a solution, and then invite participation. Those are the three key components of a winning vision. Uh, let me give an example here just to help break it down a little bit. We're in youth ministry, so here's some stats that I found and that just burdened me. This is my 
problem. This is my solution and my how I would go about doing this if I were sitting down from across the table with somebody. So define the problem. Do you realize that 20% of those in their mid-20s retain the same level of involvement in church or church-related activities from their teen years? This comes from a study of the Barnard Group back in 2006. That means we have about an 80% attrition rate according to this study. Another study was done, published in 2011, by Dr. Kara Powell and Dr. Chap Clark. Uh, they wrote a book called Sticky Faith. Perhaps you've read it too. Well, they found that between 40 and 50% of kids who graduate from a church or youth group will fail to stick with their faith through college. And so what we have then is a huge attrition problem in youth ministry. And that burdens me an awful lot because I put a lot of time and effort into what I do. And I don't want to see kids abandon the faith, jettison Jesus within five to 10 years after graduating from high school. So what's the solution then? If that's the problem, what's the solution? Well, I believe we need to understand that evangelism is an event in the discipleship making process. You see, we don't have any trouble as youth ministers about getting kids in the door for the most part. We know what bells uh, to play, we know what whistles to blow, we know all of that, uh, but we seem to have a greater problem on the discipleship end. So evangelism is an event in the discipleship making process. You see, everything that we do with kids is about discipleship. That means from the moment I walk into a school and I introduce myself to a young teen, I am already mentoring him into what we do and who we are as Christians. And that discipleship begins sometimes before the evangelistic event. And I believe in all cases it does. So define the problem, propose a solution, and then invite participation. So I might, as I'm sitting across the table from somebody, I might say something like this. Are you in a position right now to financially partner with me in the difficult task of producing 25-year-old followers of Jesus? You see, my thinking is that if we can help get young people to age 25 and they're still involved in church or church-related activities, then the likelihood of them continuing on in their journey with Jesus for the rest of their life greatly shifts in the church's favor. So that's mine, all right? That's a, a problem, a solution, and an inviting of participation that is my, that I own. And what your challenge is going to be is you need to define that for yourself. You need to be able to put this into your own language, in your own words, so that when it comes to that moment and that winning fundraising appointment with a potential ministry partner, you can let your passion pour. You can articulate it forwards and backwards upside down, inside out, you know it because you own it, you own your problem and you have a solution and you're excited to invite other people in to participate with you. So let's review a little bit the difference between vision and mission. Vision, big picture. Vision is the forest, whereas mission is the here and now, it is the trees. What we need to focus in on is not the big picture, we don't want to get bogged down too much in the nitty-gritty details. And the reason for that is as you get into the field and as you start working with young people, you might discover that you need to tweak how you do what you do a little bit. You need to hone it. And it's okay if those things change. But the vision, why you're doing what you're doing, that needs to be rock solid. So the three key components that we talked about is we need to define the problem we have to be able to propose a solution that fixes the problem, and then we need to invite participation. So, application. Here's something for you to think about. Which of those three components of a winning vision is the most difficult for you to articulate right now? Is it defining the problem? Maybe you haven't thought deep enough about what the true problem is or what something is that you want to go about solving. Maybe it's it's hard for you to ask people to join with you, to partner with you in ministry. And so that might be a growth area for you. Whatever that most difficult problem is for you right now in those three components of a winning vision statement, I would recommend that you make this a targeted growth area. Again, we want to have a growth mindset. 
We are dynamic people that are on a journey with Jesus. And just because we don't aren't strong in all three areas, or maybe two out of three, or just maybe just one out of three, that doesn't mean that we can't grow in that area to become more effective. So there it is, how to create winning vision statements. I hope that you found this episode helpful. If so, please like and share, and I would be honored by that. All right, take care.